one of the apprehensions some of our people had and some of the apprehensions by some of the locals, especially neighbors, was the concern of plague. Uh, we all are very, very familiar with plague and prairie dogs. And, you know, when you talk about plague, bubonic plague, and, and I'm no plague expert by any means, uh, it's anonymous, plague and prairie dogs. And so you think that prairie dogs are the, the cause of plague. Well, I learned a lot through the Texas Human Health Services Zoonosis Branch. We work with a lot, and through Linda and through other research that I've, I've done, that uh, plague is, is in Texas. It's pretty much throughout the counties. It, it uh, got to the United States in about 1900. The first real outbreak we ever saw in Texas was around 1920 at Galveston, and they came in on ships coming from the eastern United States or Asia. Uh, plague originated in, in Asia, China, somewhere over in there in the 1800s when it was first documented. came to America by way of ships and were transmitted by small rodents, rats and mice. Well, a lot of the ships that left Asia, you know, they were full of rats and mice. And these rats and mice brought the disease with them, and then it's transmitted pretty much by fleas that, you know, are on a, a rat, they jump off that rat onto the next rat, and as the flea bites it, it, it gives them the plague, and that's how it's transmitted. And so in the, the port cities back in the 1800s and early 1900s, a lot of those ports were just infested with rats and mice. In some years, you know, you'd have a lot more than others, and that was what contributed to the Galveston outbreak of, of the plague in 1920, I think it was, summer of 1920. Uh, even though it was considered a, an outbreak, uh, I think only like seven or ten, maybe a dozen people died. It didn't kill a lot of people, but it was an outbreak. And nowadays what you see is that plague uh, is in the environment. If they tested enough, I was told by the Texas Human Health Services, that they would probably find plague in every county of the state of Texas if they tested enough species. But what you get with prairie dogs is a species that has no tolerance to plague. You've got, say, on 10 acres, you may have two or 300 prairie dogs living on 10 acres. That's a high density for any animal, especially a mammal living together. Uh, a raccoon who, who has had been ex- exposed to plague comes walking through the prairie dog town. A, a flea jumps off that raccoon and bites a prairie dog. That prairie dog he bites and transmits the bacteria to will be dead within 72 hours in all cases. But in that time, he's infecting a lot of other fleas that are jumping off him onto his close neighbors because they're living in the same holes, going in and out of sharing the holes, sharing the the entrances of the holes, and sharing the habitat. And so it, it can move very fast to prairie dog town, killing every prairie dog it touches. Uh, within 72 hours. Some species, such as Mexican ground squirrels, foxes, skunks, raccoons, uh, coyotes, they can, they can be bitten by a flea carrying the bacteria. They can get, build up the immunity to it, but yet they can be carriers and keep it going. Uh, it's not the same way with, with prairie dogs. Prairie dogs really are a dead end host. But, uh, when you have 200 animals living on 10 acres and, and plague would get in it, kills 200 animals, is very noticeable. When it kills one raccoon walking by himself through the field or plots by himself, it's less likely to notice it. And so people, they, they thought, you know, that the plague was in the prairie dog town and it exploded and now the prairie dogs are making everything else sick. Uh, when actually it's the other way around, everything else is making the prairie dogs <laughs> sick. Yes, the prairie dogs get it. Yes, it kills a lot, but they're not the cause of it most of the time. So they kind of get a bad rap association for, with them and plague. 